In InDesign, I'm trying to make an interactive magazine for iPad. So I've got here my front page, and I've got my article start. Now I want to actually add part of the article. We've already got some text here, and what I really want to do is add a gallery in this spot here, something I can scroll through. So rather than just having a static image like you would do in normal magazine, you have something interactive, make it a bit more interesting and a bit more valued for the reader. So what we're going to do is do this very quickly by eye. So let's take the rectangle frame tool and we're just going to draw out roughly where we want it. So two columns worth and about that. So we've got this, then we want to make a few copies. So hold down the Alt key and just drag two, three, four, and five. So we've got it there those five times. The actual placement doesn't really matter. You can also go edit or select your frame, edit and duplicate or use keys. So now we've got to place our images in there. So file, place, and you navigate to where the images are. In this case, I've got a folder set for gallery and I'm ready to go. I just select all my five images and click open. You'll see that my cursor now has the five images attached to it. I just hover over the frames and I click once inside each frame. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now you will see that these images have not completely filled the frame. That's completely fine. So what you do is we just move our frames to the side. So it doesn't actually matter where they go, we just move them somewhere where we can see the full content. Let's go from up there and move this one down here. And then we can start placing them where we want them. So hovering over the image, wait to the circle in the middle there, click once, and you see that the frame goes brown. Hold down shift, which is very important, and drag the edges just so that it matches exactly where it is. Now this is a useful technique, so even though you might have the picture completely filling the frame, you can still compose it to be exactly where you want it to be. So let's take it along here, stretch out, and do it there. Now, so I want to compose it a bit better. That looks better to me. Let's do it for this one. Zoom out a bit so we can get a bit of perspective. Move this one across. There we are. Enlarge, enlarge, and then compose. It does help if all your images are about the same size to start. Remember, when you're making them larger, you are stretching them and possibly pixelating them. We don't really want that. So if your images are looking very pixelated, go back to original source and see, um, can you replace it with a larger image with a higher resolution? If you can't, you can do upscaling. There's a video on that in, um, in YouTube. So we can link to that in the description below. So now I've got all our images ready, and I'm pretty happy about their placement. So I need to get them all ready to become a gallery. So I select one, hold on shift, two, three, four, five. You'll notice that it's got blue around the edges. And if I went to my layers menu, you can see that my five images have the meatball selected, the blue dot. That's telling me anything I do is going to go into there. So I've now got to completely overlay them 100%. So it doesn't matter if you've got one image or one image gallery, two images or 100 image, they've all got to be completely overlaid. So the way we do that, let's go Windows and output, sorry, object and layout, align, and we bring out our alignment tool here. So let's take the first one, we have line objects horizontal, it brings them all in line there, and then align to vertical centers, that brings them all there. We can just take that and move it back to where we want it to. So it's very easy. Now remember, we've still got all the items selected. If you've only got one selected at this point, then you've got to go and redo it. But I'll show you how this is easily done. I'm going to click out there. So I've deselected it. You can see from the side there's no blue bit selected. I'm just going to zoom in to make this a bit clearer. So I go to my side here with the layers panel, click once on the blue beside picture, two, three, four and five with my shift key, so all those five now selected. Now to get sure, make sure I'm ready to go, I've got my panel set out here, so you can go to Windows, Workspace, and if you choose Digital Publishing, this will get you the workspace which you need. Um, if you've chosen Digital Publishing and it doesn't look the same, just say Reset. So anyway, here we are, we've got our five images selected, 
and we click on object states and that brings up this new menu so we then have to create a new object state so we click here so convert selection to multi-state object so we've done that and now I'm going to call this gallery b slash w so I've now got something ready to go but I can clear out there if I was to click back on the images, you see I've got my Mostec gallery. So the pictures are now in a state you can move between them, but how do we flick through them as a gallery? So the first thing we need to do is we need to make uh, the two chevrons, we can say left and right. So we're going to do this very simply by going to the rectangle tool on the left, and I'm going to draw out a rectangle about that much. Now, this has currently got an effect applied to it because I've been doing some work earlier. So I'm going to clear that effect, which will give you an insight into some things you can do with InDesign. So Windows Effects and just go to Normal. So there we have a blue rectangle. It's not what we want. We want to drop down here and clear the fill. Drop down the stroke and say blue. Then we're going to bring up the, um, the weighting to about four pixels. And that's about what I want. Hold down the shift key and go to near the edge of the rectangle and it turns into a bendy line. You can then drag it round by 45 degrees so we've now got a diamond. If we select this again and we zoom in, we can now split this in two to make two chevrons. The way we do that is on the left, we have the scissors tool and we click one to the top and twice to the bottom. If I now click on one, I can just move that to the side, we've got two chevrons. So I'm going to move that all the way to there. Now, to make sure they're all aligned properly, I can hold down shift and select both of them. Go back to my alignment, so object and layout align. So we can say horizontally in the middle, that's perfect. And if I just take this, I can take them all. You can see how they snap to the middle. It's about there. That's the middle of the middle. Um, I'm just going to break it down to the bottom here because I think that's a bit more where I'd like to go. So you can play with the size, you can play with the layout, but the pr base principle is there. At the moment, these are just images. They don't actually do anything. So we need to find a way to make the buttons interact with the multi-state which we set up before. So we select the left chevron and on our right panel we choose buttons. Drop down on type and say button. And we're going to call this something name. Now, in this example, we're only making one gallery and one load of buttons, so we don't really need to rename them. However, if you're making lots and lots of galleries, lots of buttons, lots of interactive features in your app or magazine or anything you're making, you need to have more than one way of doing this, one name. So it's always good to name them something which is going to help you remember what they are at a later date. So I'm going to say BW Gallery Left. Right. And named is given action so click on the plus and I go to go to previous state so that is going to the previous slide because it's a multi-state icon click away and we tap on the next chevron drop down again button I'm going to rename it again so that's BW gallery right click on the action and go to next state so that's really how it is that's what we need for this. So let's zoom out. And now we're going to go and test to see this works. So firstly, save your work. So file save. I did it by keyboard just then. We need to now export this. So file, export. So what we want to do is choose where we want to put it. I'm going to choose from desktop. And the format, we're going to export it in. There's quite a few different formats you can do. I'm saying EPUB fixed layout. And click save. We get a few um, options coming up here for EPUB 3. Now, I want to publish the entire magazine. Now, just like anything else in design, you can publish a range. You can have a cover of your magazine. I'm just going to say, use the first page. You might have something else which your company uses, but first page is completely fine for me. And navigation table of contents, I don't really need for now. So, I think that I am about ready. So, click OK. That will have down be saving there. We see exporting to EPUB. And by the way, I wasn't waiting here. I'm going to link in the description of this video where you can download some free EPUBs. So, uh, sorry, EPUBs, EPUB readers. So if you're on Mac or PC, you'll be completely fine. Now this file doesn't actually matter, so just click OK. 
And if I minimize this and that, we will see an EPUB on my desktop, which is just there. So you can see a nice little icon, which looks very nice. So double click on this and you can see that we have our magazine. Now this is using iBooks. So if you are using uh, Windows, you can have download a version in the description, but if you're on a Mac, iBooks is fine. So I'm going to go to my magazine, go to page two, and here I am. I'm just going to click on my chevrons either side, and I have got a navigationable um, iPad. I've got a navigationable gallery. So it's as simple as that. A few st small steps, but it really is not hard to do, and you can do this very easily for your work.